Good evening, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1099 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app or click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding and preaching at liturgy today is Father Schoberly. Please stand and join in our gathering song, number 516, Come to Us, O Emmanuel. That's number 516. to us, O Emmanuel, come to us, O Emmanuel, come, O radiant Son of Justice, come to us, come and shine on those in darkness. All who dwell in shades of death, come to us, O Emmanuel. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come, O light of all the nations, come to us, O Emmanuel. Come, bright morning star of new. And shine among us here. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come, O living flame of freedom. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Living hope of our redemption. And lead us to new life. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come to us, O Emmanuel. Come to us, O In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we arrive at the fourth Sunday of Advent, we clearly see a horizon before us, a reminder that Christmas is oh so close, and that our call to keep on proclaiming that mystery is right with us. So as we prepare to enter into this celebration, let us acknowledge the constant need we have for God's presence and mercy in our lives. Lord Jesus, promised Messiah, long-awaited Savior, justice of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of God, Son of Mary, Christ of mercy, Lord 
Jesus, hope of the poor, light of the nations and prince of peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord to pour forth your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. Let the Lord enter, he is king of glory. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. Let the Lord answer, he is king of glory. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter, he is king of glory.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness. Through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all the beloved of God in Rome called to be holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. shall conceive and bear a son, Alleluia, and they shall name him Emmanuel, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Now that Christmas is in sight, 
I'd love it if you remembered back to the first Sunday of Advent when I began talking about Christmas. And my justification for getting to Christmas this week is, of course, the whole opening line of the gospel. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. And, of course, the name Jesus itself means the Lord is salvation. So now we can start our Christmas clock, seven days worth. That's just under 167 hours to our Christmas Eve Vigil Mass. Do you remember the first week when I spoke of God becoming human? So brazen, so daring, so incomprehensible, God becomes human. Remember I warned you about driving and thinking about that at the same time? I said we got a full four weeks of Advent to reflect on people and prophets who had startling insights about God or bewildering events happening in their lives. To illustrate the discovery unimaginable, I told you the story of John the African who discovers God on his own journey when he was trying to find God who dwelt apart from his people only to realize, after meeting God, that God's choice is to dwell among the people, to be among us. There was God, Jesus, before he was ever named or sent. Jesus, before God. I mean, Jesus is God, before we ever had a name for him. And then God becomes human. We hear the name he's given, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, the Lord of salvation. And then, continuing the mystery, then God, as human, dies. Jesus dies and is again God and divine. And hence, the Holy Spirit is the divinity of God with us. God has transformed us all. That's the whole mystery. The prophecy of Isaiah tonight, as so many of the prophecy stories in Advent, is part of our Jewish heritage where the unveiling of God with us comes by God's own choice. The chosen people have their king, Ahaz, and he is not a good king. He has been making deals and political alliances for his own benefit with neighboring countries. The reason he does not ask for a sign from God is his own selfish choice. He wants things his way. He is trying to make it sound noble that he is so dependent on God that he needs nothing else. But it's the opposite. Isaiah knows better. God desires to give a sign to his people. The virgin will conceive, Emmanuel will be born, and the people will be saved. The Lord has promised, the Lord will do it. In our own world, we have seen this pattern before. People saying that they have answers and don't need more wisdom or information because it might change their plans or their mind. Have we looked for different patterns or answers than the ones we are presented with? Are we open to the prophecy of God with us? In contrast to Ahaz, we have Joseph. Joseph is the quiet man. He is going to say yes to a dream. Joseph is going to stake his life on something so mysterious and incredible that he can easily be seen as a model for us for Advent. Incredible things are happening. Like Mary, Joseph has a choice. And he says yes to the angel in the dream versus Mary, who had direct angelic intervention. Like his ancestor, Joseph is a dreamer. We don't hear about other dreams that he has had to this point. We do know his ancestor, Joseph the dreamer, becomes prince of Egypt. Now this Joseph, Joseph this dreamer, becomes father of God. And if you remember that Mary pondered all these events in her heart in the stable on that Christmas night, investigate the scene anew in your hearts 
and look into the corner and see Joseph pondering the events as well, pondering his dreams, pondering what the dreams in his future might bring and might mean. And while we are pondering that, did Joseph teach Jesus about dreams? Did Jesus dream? Did Jesus remember his dreams? After the dream of going to Egypt, what other dreams did Joseph have? If the gift of Joseph remained to dream, to care for his family, to teach love and faith, it leads us to the question, what are our gifts and how are we to use them? Joseph made the choice to follow God, unlike Ahaz, who missed his opportunity. You see how all of this is pointing us to Jesus? Do you see how it is all pointing to make Christmas not a holiday to celebrate, but a part of our daily lives as faith-filled Christians? We have but to turn back a page, literally, in tonight's lectionary, to our reading from Romans. And Paul knows that he is called to be an apostle, called to share the gospel of God, which amplifies everything that the prophets have foretold. The whole amazing and ongoing adventure of Jesus, Son of God, Son of David, established in power according to the spirit of holiness through the resurrection from the dead. Through him, we have received the grace of apostleship. That's why we have to be excited about understanding how this is coming, how Christ is real and with us in order that we can keep on telling the story of Emmanuel, God with us. It is no coincidence that we hear from Paul's letter to the Romans. To write to Rome was to write to the entire world, and that remains true even to today. It is for us who know the rest of the story of a Savior become human, who taught, suffered, and died, who rose from the dead, and whenever we talk about Jesus, we have the whole and continuing story. It is on us to share it. And this is how and why the birth of Jesus Christ came about for us. As we eagerly anticipate the celebration of the incarnation of the Lord, let us raise our voices for all those who seek the living God. And we'll do that after we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Sorry about that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer our prayers. That God's holy people, the Church, 
will take the message of this Advent season to a world hungering for peace and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That as the world prepares to celebrate the Feast of Christmas, those who are at war will search for new avenues to, to lasting peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will recognize the presence of Christ in the poor and needy of this world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrate Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights, keep them in your love and always faithful to your covenant. May the holiday bring them joy, happiness, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy on refugees. Give new hope to the afflicted and the sorrowful who feel that they have no place in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who find the holidays a difficult time to the recent, due to the recent loss of a loved one, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will experience healing and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died will be welcomed into the new and heavenly Jerusalem, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Pam Hines and for all the intentions we hold in prayerful silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to remember all those people who join us online and the prayers that they may be voicing now in their homes. For those prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, accept our prayers as we place them before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, we thank you for your financial support of the ministries of Old St. Mary's Parish. Those who are joining us online are welcome to also contribute by clicking the Give button at the parish website or mailing in their contributions. Thank you all. May God continue to bless you for your generosity. Please join in singing number 1009, Ave Maria. That's number 1009.
Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, may the Holy Spirit sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are holy indeed, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become that lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Most compassionate Father, look kindly on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Jesus gave us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. On news day, we only speak at the moon. We say, I know On news day, we only speak at the moon. We say, I
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word of my soul. Please join in singing number 1041, Now in this Banquet, and we will be singing the Advent verse. Once again, that is number 1041 with the Advent verse. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, Almighty God, we pray that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly 
to the earthly, to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for a moment. Thank you, as always, for joining us in prayer and worship today, especially those who are able to join us online. Uh, Please remember, next week is Christmas. So the Mass next Saturday night is at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. So that's next Saturday. Sunday morning, note a little change, Sunday morning for Christmas, 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. So that's next week. You'll find that in all of our media. So when I say media, I mean the bulletin, I mean the parish app, I mean the parish website, which is where you can find more information about all this other stuff as well. So the Christmas schedule, as I said, is right there. Uh, There's also a longstanding Catholic tradition of, of blessing homes on the Solemnity of Epiphany, Epiphany, which this year is on January 8th. If you would like to observe this tradition in your household, Please pick up an Epiphany of the Lord Catholic Household Blessing leaflet from the tables in the commons. So it'll be right there. Over on the, <clears throat> on the desk in the commons, you'll also find the 2023 Catholic Extension calendar that's available for you. And we still have our Advent Christmas reflection booklets. So obviously next week we're switching to Christmas. Uh, they're available for you to pick up as well. Chicago Shares vouchers will be available for purchase after Mass today. As some of you know, these can be given to the people you encounter who are asking for your assistance on the streets of Chicago. We have those on the third Sunday of every month. So feel free, you can ask more questions about Dennis, if you about them from Dennis. Check it out. You know, ask Dennis anything, but it's uh, there. Um, and, uh, how many of you are going to be traveling over the holidays? Okay, let, let's ask you special God's blessing may guide you and keep you safe. Amen? Amen. 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 And then who's visiting us today? Who's visiting her person? We've got a couple people. We want to welcome you, just like, you know, Christmas is a lot about welcoming the stranger and visitor. Thank you for joining us tonight. How about a round of applause? For you? And just in case, if you're not able to be with us next week, we wish you blessings on the Christmas season and in the new year. So the Lord be with you. Receive now God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of our only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go now and proclaim Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Please join in singing number 500, O Come Divine Messiah, 500. Come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn. Hope shall sing its rhyme.
from desired of nations, whom priests and prophets long foretold. Come break the captive fetters, redeem the long lost fold. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. Come, divine Messiah, the world in silence wakes the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Oh, come in peace and meekness for lonely will